In this video, I'm going to give closure as to the difference between the words destiny and fate and why it was important for me to do this. So the first one I'm going to parse is destiny. According to Google, destiny is a predetermined course of events, meaning your destiny has already been chosen for you, as if it's a plan or someone else's plan. It's already been planned out. You don't have any choice in the matter. When we break it down into the particles, we have the particle of negation, DE, as in no, and certification of that would be de-escalate, no escalation. It means no. The next particle is stenere, which is Latin. It comes from the Proto-Indo-European root steno, which means stand. So if you see ST in a word, it usually means stand. And then the suffix Y added at the end just means contract. So basically, destiny means no standing contract. So if you have a destiny, you don't have a contract. It's already been written for you. You have no choice in the matter. And real quick, I'll just go through them, underline in red, the particles of negation. So we add a little extra value to this parse lesson. Now we move on to the word fate. And Google tells us that fate means the development of events beyond a person's control regarded as determined by supernatural power. So among many things we find in the etymology dictionary, fate from the 1500s means power that rules destinies. And then it goes to Latin fari, which means speak. And then the Proto-Indo-European ba, which means speak, tell, say. So basically, fate is a communication contract. And I will tie this together in the next section. But I'll go through and outline the underline and the particles of negation before I do that. So here is my correct sentence structure claim for the finite mean of fate written in quantum grammar. And I'd like to give a shout out to those people still hung up on the fiction uh, concepts of all caps. To those that say, have you ever seen a dictionary in all caps? Well, my dictionary is in all caps, so there's one. For the fate of this finite mean is with the claim of this knowledge and volition with the conveyance of this covenant and contract with the authorization of the claimant's communication venue with the governance of the claimant's kuleana with the certification by the claimant and author. Backwards, for the claimant and author of the certification is with the claimant's kuleana of the governance, with the claimant's communication venue of the authorization, with this covenant and contract of the conveyance, with this knowledge and volition of the claim, with this finite mean by the fate, period. So to go through it in detail, the cause is the fate. What is the fate concerned with? This finite mean. We have our two points. We can draw a straight line. We know where we're going. We can put our verb of the thinking in. We can put the movement in to move it into the possessive of the claim. The verb is singular because fate is singular. With the claim, 
this is possessive of the finite mean. And what is the claim concerned with? This knowledge and volition. What is possessive of the volition and knowledge? With the conveyance. And what is the conveyance concerned with? This covenant and contract. And what's possessive of those things? With the authorization. And what is the authorization concerned with? The claimant's communication venue. Now that means whether I'm speaking, whether I'm writing, whether I'm gesturing, making eye contact, these are all communication venues. There are more than that, of course. What is possessive of the communication venue? With the governance. And what is the governance concerned with? The claimant's kuleana. What is kuleana? I'll leave a link to my video giving closure to that up there. Long story short, kuleana is a rule one, rule equal exchange of communication value. It's a responsibility between contract parties with the honor and the grace. And what's possessive of that? The certification with the certification. And what is the authority of it? The claimant and author. Backwards, the cause becomes the claimant and author. And what is that concerned with? The certification. Now we have our two points, our cause, our concern. We can drop our verb of the thinking in. Singular is with the claimant's kuleana. That is possessing the certification. And what is that concerned with? The governance. And what is possessive of the governance? The claimant's communication venue. And what is that concerned with? The authorization. And what is possessive of that? This covenant and contract. And what is that concerned with? The conveyance. And what is possessive of the conveyance? This knowledge and volition. Well, what is possessive or what is concerned with the knowledge and volition? This claim. And what is possessive of this claim? This finite mean and the authority of it is fate. And that is the difference between fate and destiny. Destiny, someone else has predetermined your fate and you have no control over it. It's a no standing contract. You have no standing. With fate, you are the steward of your vessel. And your fate is only, your, your fate is determined by your communication skills. How well you communicate and the closure you have on the grammar you use to communicate or the method with which you use to communicate, the communication venue. So, how well you speak determines your fate. Hope that made sense. If you have any questions about the grammar, as always, you can contact me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching.